Hello and welcome. Ever wondered how you can deploy tens or hundreds of VMs to Proxmox in a matter of seconds? In this video, I'll show you how to do exactly that and much more, so stay tuned. Keep in mind that each step of this guide will have a time code, so if you are confident you know how to do A or B, feel free to skip forward. It's always a good thing when you can save some time for the things you love by automating the boring repetitive processes, like any OS installation for example, with just few text fields or questions and next 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 buttons. Just to give you a perspective, I need approximately 25 minutes to install and configure Debian 10 VM from the ISO provided on the Debian.org. And that time will be completely wasted if I needed that VM for just 10 minutes to test a feature, check out new software, or whatever comes to your mind for short-term deployments. And this is where CloudInit comes into play. Because with help of CloudInit and Proxmox cloning, you can rapidly deploy up-to-date images of your favorite OSs without putting in a lot of effort and long working hours. Proxmox only provides basic functionality for the VMs deployed via Cloud in its system. You'll be able to set up username, password, DNS domain, DNS servers, SSH public key, and IP, be it static or DHCP configuration. And just in case you lose a password to any VM, it's really easy to reset it. Just change it over here in a password section change it according to your preference. I'll just put in a short, easy password. Then power off your VM, click regenerate image, and then start your VM backup. That's it, password changed, just like that. Although I would like to see cloud init section improve over time, for example, the list of additional packages to install upon the start would be nice, but as of now, it's more than enough to make our lives much easier as sysadmins or home labbers. For example, if I want to deploy new Debian 10 VM, it's easy enough for me just to choose my Debian 10 cloud init image, press clone, choose VM ID, which would be 108 in my case, then give it a name and press clone. Now it's going to clone the VM, give it a few moments. Now when it's done, let's close this window and let's switch to our newly created machine. In the hardware section, we want to expand the disk because 5 gigs is not enough for us. For example, we want to give it 20 gigabytes. And then we also want to give it 4 cores and one gigabyte of memory because it's plenty for a test. I also forgot to mention in the beginning that whenever you expand the disk size, it will be automatically applied to the VM whenever you start it or restart it. And another thing is that VM name inside of Proxmox will be used as a host name inside of the VM. Let me show you. So if I start the VM and give it a few moments to boot, CloudInit is starting. Oh, and by the way, CloudInit will apply the latest upgrades for your OS upon the start. Now, when VM is fully started, let's log in and check out if we have a host name set. The host name is test and it matches our VM name. And also let's check if our disk was expanded. And indeed it was. At first it was 5 gigabyte and now it's 20. So as you can see, very clear, straightforward setup. With just few clicks, you can have VM up and running within seconds if you are on a proper production system. But even if you are using Proxmox on a slow system, this is going to save you a lot of time because during the cloning process, you don't have to stick around and press next, next, next. You can just uh, walk away, maybe grab a coffee or something and wait for the process to finish. Now that you've seen an end result, let me show you how to prepare the VM for the use with CloudInit because it kind of requires a very specific configuration 
And I'll use Debian 10 as an example to demo out the installation process. Also, for those of you wondering, yes, you can download a ready to go cloud init image, but I prefer to prep it myself to learn what needs to be done and understand every step of the way. So in case there are any issues in the future, I'm ready for anything. Let's shut down this new test VM so it doesn't consume any resources on our machine. And let's move on to the Debian 10 installation. The installation is pretty straightforward. You just need to watch and repeat what I'm doing here. I'm going to choose English as my language, United Kingdom as my location, British English. I'll leave the default host name as Debian because that doesn't matter for us. Cloudinit will fix it anyway. For the root password, you can use any password effectively because Cloudinit will reset it anyways. For the user, I'll use test user. Just remember it for the future we're going to have to remove it from our default installation. So let's continue. And the password would be something similar to root password. Now comes the tricky part. In the partitioning section of the installation, choose the manual method and click continue. Then choose your disk. In my case is SCSI 3. Then continue. Uh, I want to create new partition table. Then click on a free space and click next. Let's create a new partition, size 1007, primary, and bootable flag on. Now click done setting up the partition and hit continue. That's pretty much all you have to do to partition the disk. Please don't add any swap partitions to the setup because Cloudinit will not be able to expand the root partition for you automatically. Now when you're done, Click finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Continue. You want to return to the menu? No. Write changes to disk? Yes. And now let's wait for the base system to install. Okay, so the base installation is finally finished. Let's click next. Continue. Choose the mirror. Continue. I do want to participate in the package usage survey, but if you don't, hit no. In my case, I'm going to choose yes. And at the software selection screen, I'll just remove Debian desktop environment and print server. And I'll add the SSH server to the list, along with standard system utilities, hit continue. And it's going to install all of the default software now, give it a few minutes. And we're going to be able to restart our newly created VM. Yes, we want to install the grub bootloader and choose our disk. Now when the basic installation is complete, let's reboot our system. Once the machine comes back online, log in as root and figure out its IP address, which in my case is this, 192.168.120.12. So it's going to be SSH, test user at 192.168.120.12. By the way, I'm using Linux here, but you can do the same in PowerShell on Windows. So we want to answer yes to that and give our test user password. Once logged in, switch to root and type in root password. Now what I'm about to show you is a little risky to do on a production grade system. But because my systems are behind the firewall and are not exposed to the internet, it's safe for me to do. So I'm going to go to Etsy, SSH, SSHD config, and I'll allow direct root SSH login with just password. Now let's restart SSH daemon. And let's exit this system. Log back in with Oh, I'm sorry, log back in with a root password and root user. Okay, we're back in. Once you are logged in as root, let's remove our test user from the system. Now we need to create a swap file to replace the swap partition. And all of the commands I'm executing here, they will be included in the video description down below. This is still swap file. So make swap 
then swap on, then just echo it into FS tab. And that's done. Now it's time to install cloud init cloud init grow root. This is the utility that will automatically expand your root partition and QEMU guest agent. This will give Proxmox some more control over the VM. For example, things like graceful shutdown, it will be able to read the IP addresses of the system and things like that. Now when this is done, I'm going to install all of the software I use on a daily basis. This step is optional. If you want to just go through my package list and delete the packages you don't need. And now finally with next few commands, I'm setting up my default and favorite shell fish. If you want to do it, just follow along and uh, paste some commands from the video description. I'm also installing my favorite theme for fish, which is Bob the fish, as you can see in here, then I'll set up the greeting. And that's pretty much it. Let's exit the VM, open the terminal again. And there you go. Everything is up and running. Okay, we can minimize this. Now go to hardware and add a cloud in it drive. Choose the storage and click create. Once you create the cloud in it drive, you're going to have to shut down the VM and start it back up again for the cloud in it drive to appear in the setup. See, it changed the color from orange to black. And it means that everything is good to go. Then switch to cloud in it section. Um, let's switch the default user. I'm going to use root. And by the way, if you use any other user in here, for example, Debian, or I don't know, uh, tour, or something like that, it's going to disable the root user. And it will give the user you create in here pseudo privileges, and then it will become a very good, nice and secure setup. Let's give it a password. DNS domain and DNS settings. I'm not interested in this, but you can set it up if you want to. I'm not interested in SSH keys at the moment. I'll just change the IP config to DHCP IPv4. Regenerate the image and hit start. Once VM is started, Cloudinit will reset the SSH keys. It will lock the root account if you chose a different user than root. And it's also going to set a proper host name, as I said earlier. So there you go. Now you can shut down the VM, clone it as many times as you want, and create as many VMs as you want to. And by the way, I don't like to convert this master VM into an actual template in Proxmox because the template has few drawbacks. No easy way to modify it on the go. No easy way to upgrade to latest packages after conversion. Image becomes static. And if you want to do any modifications, you need to create a VM from that template, modify it, then convert it back into template. And that wastes a lot of time, which completely destroys the purpose of this tutorial, because we wanted to save time, not waste it. That's it for this video. Please sub, like and share. If you'd like to help out our channel directly, there is a PayPal donation link down below. Special thanks to the people listed on the screen. You guys are gold. Thank you for actively supporting our channel. It really means a lot to us. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.